Hi, I'm Eric Spensley. Today I'm going to show you how we built this crosscut sled for our table saw on Spensley Design Co. Now before we get started, just want to address something. Yes, this is a lot bigger than most table saw sleds that you see. So if you want to make it a little smaller, just follow the exact same plans, but cut everything down. Let's get started. Our old crosscut sled was made out of a bunch of beat up scraps and desperately needed to be thrown out and was also a little too small for our tastes. We started off by grabbing some plywood strips that we're going to break down into five identical pieces for the front and rear fences. We want the finished height of the fence to be three and three quarter inches, but since we were laminating pieces together, we cut them to about four and a half inches so we have plenty of room to trim them down once they're laminated together. Before we trim these pieces down, we want to remind you to head over to Instagram and follow us at Spensley Design Co. That's where we post exclusive behind the scenes videos and photos of all the projects that we're working on and you'll be able to see projects before they hit YouTube. We took three of the strips and laminated them together with a generous amount of glue. But once we clamped them together, we noticed a good amount of bow so we had to grab some scrap pieces with straight edges to make sure that everything was perfectly flat as we clamped them together. And while the glue on the front fence was curing, we grabbed our other two strips that we cut down from before to make the back fence for the sled. We applied glue, clamped, and then went inside for some tasty lunch. After devouring our yummy sandwiches, the glue had cured and we removed the clamps on the front fence and were left with a nice solid block. We needed to run this through the table saw a few times to clean up all the edges, remove the glue squeeze out, and then bring it to final size. We then grabbed a chamfer bit for our router, locked it in, and added a subtle chamfer to the bottom edge of the fence. This will act as a relief area for excess sawdust to go so the accuracy of the sled stays consistent. While this part is optional, we wanted to add some aluminum T-track to the top of the front fence to hold stop blocks, so we swapped out the chamfer bit for a 3 quarter inch straight bit and routed out a groove for the T-track to sit in. We found this red T-Track on Amazon substantially cheaper than the Rockler or Craig versions and it works great. We're going to throw a link down in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. With the groove for the T-Track cut, we need to clean up the ends of the fence, so we grabbed our speed square and circular saw to trim the fence to final length. To make everything more comfortable in our hands, we used a 1 quarter inch roundover bit to smooth all the edges and then moved on to trimming the T-Track to its final length. The T-Track is made out of aluminum which means it's soft enough for normal woodworking tools to cut. Just go slow and you won't have any problems. We did a dry fit of the T-Track and marked where we needed to cut it on our miter saw. Just be careful because the cut edge will be sharp, which is why we put it on the inside. To hold the track securely to the fence, we use Gorilla Epoxy. To squeeze it into the tray, mix, and spread it in the groove of the fence. Now this stuff sets up fairly quickly, so just remember to move fast. And once we had it clamped in, we set it aside and trimmed our back fence to final size on the table saw. With the fences taken care of, we grabbed a larger sheet of plywood that would be the base of our sled. We measured the sheet and somehow the scrap was the exact size that we needed. But you can always trim it down to the length and width that you need for your specific application. Now the first order of business is to make some runners that will fit into the slots on the table saw. We grabbed some scrap hardwood, in this case maple, and after figuring out how the deep the slots were, we set our table saw fence to the exact same measurement and ripped some pieces of maple. Now, if you've made it this far in this video, do us a favor and subscribe. We post a new project video every week and you definitely won't want to miss what we have coming up. Thanks! The next step is super important to be precise. We cut the runners to approximate width on the slot, but it was way too wide, so we cut it down one more time to get a perfect fit. Now this runner should fit snugly in the slot, but there should be no side-to-side -side play. With the runners cut, you can grab nuts, pennies, or washers and place them in the miter slots. This will raise the runners above the surface of the table and allow the sled base to firmly seat on the runners. We applied a small amount of glue to each runner and set the sled base on top. 
Now alignment is not super important here, just really get it as straight as you can. We then threw a couple of scrap pieces of MDF on top to hold the pieces together while the glue cured. And if you're liking this video so far, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps our channel grow and we appreciate every small thing you can do to help us. Thanks. Once the glue cured, we removed the nuts and drilled a few countersunk holes into the runners before securely fastening them to the base with some screws. Now these screws will likely spread the runners just enough so that they won't fit in the miter slots anymore so we lightly sanded them up until we got a perfect fit. And to help everything glide well, we covered the bottom of the sled with paste wax and we were ready to attach the fences. The back fence was clamped down and we marked out the location of the blade to make sure we don't put any screws anywhere close to that spot. We made a mark of the center of the fence and pre-drilled and countersunk holes before driving screws to hold the rear fence securely on the sled. Once again, just make sure not to have screws anywhere close to where the blade will go. With the rear fence securely attached, we brought the sled back to the table saw and slowly ran the blade through the rear of the sled but not too close to the front. Once again, it's important not to go too close to the front edge. We can then set the front fence on the sled and with one side clamped down, use a square to get the fence as perpendicular as possible. And clamp the other end. We then countersunk a hole at one end of the fence and drove a screw in. This end of the fence will act as a pivot point, and we can use a speed square to square the fence to the blade. This should be pretty darn accurate, but we also used the five cut method to make a few final adjustments. Once we were satisfied with the alignment, we clamped everything down and drove screws into the fence, again making sure not to get too close to the blade. And with the fence securely attached, we could run the blade through the fence. And this part is totally optional, you'll notice that the blade protrudes out the back of the sled and there's a risk of accidentally hitting your hand or fingers on the blade. So we grabbed a scrap piece of plywood and we're going to cut it up into a few small pieces to make a guard to cover where the blade exits the sled. Plus, it's a great opportunity to test the sled out itself. We added our Cat's Moses stop block to the sled and tightened it down before our pieces were magically cut. But really, I just don't know how to work the camera and didn't record this part. However, here's an example of how to use everything with some random scrap pieces. You first tighten the stop block down at your desired length, butt the piece up to the stop, make the cut, then you slide your next piece over. And now you've got two pieces that are the exact same length. Now back to the project. We took the pieces that we cut and glued them all together in a cube. After the glue dried, we ran it through the table saw to clean up all the faces and used the router to soften the edges with a roundover bit. With the cube ball jazzed up, we added some glue and placed it over the exit point of the blade and clamped it while the glue cured. A few hours later, we could come back and remove the clamps and we could cut the slot on the safety block for the blade to hide in and this sled was finished. We're so happy to get rid of that old crosscut sled finally. It had tons of screw holes in it and it really wasn't all that square. The addition of this T-Track is gonna be perfect for us. We have the ability to slide these stops on and adjust everything very quickly as opposed to our old sled, we had to clamp blocks on and it wasn't fast, it wasn't accurate. 